launching something this afternoon that I hope will become an initiative that will spread through our schools and help us once again give the kind of emphasis that we'd like to give to the extraordinary place in which we live. We've invited several people to come and for a few moments each to give us a little story, a story they would like to, having to do with Napa, having to do with their own personal life, having to do with their own history, because that's what we're all about. We are attempting to bring history home again. It is a sad state of affairs, I say, when we live in places and we are just pretty blind to what's around us. Hopefully in the days ahead we shall make progress in lifting the curtain a bit and, and, uh, and making our way into a better understanding. There are many people here, and I'm going to start with my friend John, who's particularly a history involved in the Napa River, and is here to talk to us for a minute about some of those things that have to do with that extraordinary resource we have. They really don't know the story, and the story is about how somebody uses that land. That's where it begins. Napa had a lot of natural resources, and it was only 20 miles down the river to the bay, and they had the second longest navigable river in the state of California. And of course, with the rich valley, that they had here, they were capable of growing many crops, lots of crops that uh, could be used for feeding cattle and produced the food and the resources that were needed to build not only San Francisco, but also to sustain a lot of people, ships that went overseas. A lot of the material was taken right from the Napa Valley. But Napa first had the Indians, and they were called Napa Indians, N-A-P-P-A. And there were the Mexicans, the Spanish, the ranchos, the Rancho Rincón de los Caneros. The Rancho Rincón de los Caneros, they're all based on land grants, which were granted by the Mexican and this rule of the Mexican government uh, to various people, entrepreneurs and uh, other people who aided and assisted the governor and uh, who were deserving in the eyes of the governor and the captain of the guards in Sonoma, <laughs> such as uh, General Vallejo. Napa has a, has a varied history. You have inventors that came from here. You not only had ranchers, you not only have vineyardists, you have a wide variety of agriculture. This, this area, this beautiful valley that we live in, was not home to just one single source of income. Most every farm had fruit trees, they had prunes, they had pigs, they had cattle, they had sheep. It was a whole mixture of, of farm animals, and farm products that were grown. Wheat was one of the major commodities that was grown and transported from the city of Napa. And much of the wheat was actually grown in the Berryessa Valley, some of the richest, finest San Ysidro loam soils in the state of California. And Every year, they would get wonderful crops up there. In fact, before there was the entrepreneurs of the growers and the people who were farming it up there, there was supposedly 15,000 Indians living in the Berryessa Valley. So it was a very rich uh, climate up there with lots of water and very good soil and grew very outstanding. In the ranchos, they had sheep and they had cattle. And they called the one over here closest to us across the river, the Rancho Rincón de los Caneros. And that's because the head sheep headed for the river, not the Napa River, but the creek. And the creek had sharp banks, and the whole herd flock of sheep went over the precipice, filled the creek, and continued on on the other side. And as our riverboat captain used to say, we named this area because of a bunch of stupid sheep. But the wheat was grown there because it got warm and put out a tremendous crop and they had the Teamsters bringing that uh, wheat and as it harvested, it came up over the mountain range and they'd stop at Windy Flats because they knew the trail from there coming up the rest of Monticello Road then down into Napa was very tortuous and after they'd made the trip from the heart of the valley, they had to rest the teams and, and the Teamsters as well. One of the things I learned being here on the school board and also starting a water district is when we wanted to put a pipeline across the river, those Spanish land grants are still active. They worked. 
they own to the center of the river. And if you have two Spanish land grants back to back that own half of the river, you don't need a permit from the state of California to go across state land. So Windy Flats is a natural supply of water and it's known as Windy Flats up on the hills there because the wind comes over the, over the mountains every afternoon and really blows. We first came to Napa here in 1970. The schools were teaching you how to bale hay. And everybody had balers, Napa High, Vintage High. And they would come and mow your hay for you and put it up. It wasn't too much long after that that they sold all the implements and they have a vineyard now. So this land here, when it was fallow or just natural, what happened to it? An entrepreneur from Scotland that came over and his name was Stuart. And uh, he purchased most of this land in here at that time. And when the Swamp and Overflow Land Survey of the state of California in 1860 was uh, created, why it shows on the plat the lands of Stuart and that some of the lands of Stuart are the ones on which we're standing today. When we first got the boat, we brought it up the river, had the 4th of July outing. There was one other boat on the river, and we're watching the fireworks. First year. The next year, the next two years, we couldn't find a spot to anchor the boat, because other people thought it was a great place, and they were shooting the fireworks right out over top of the river, and it was beautiful. If nothing else, we demonstrated to a lot of people that the Napa River is very viable, and it, at least on the 4th of July, it's a beautiful river and it's one of the best in California. And so what do you see for the future of this land now? How it continually feeds you and your family. Yeah. Not just what you can make off of it and sell it and make a quick buck. So this is a little bit of the history that I know. Okay, let's do this one more time. <laughs>